morning, everyone. Uh, Tim, thank you for sharing your talents today. We appreciate it. Uh, the worship committee thanks the, those who have agreed to serve as liturgists to open our services. Would be helpful if you know your April, May schedule to sign up now for any of those slots. Bob tries to keep the list current, but we'll be gone for most of April and all of May, so we'd like to have a schedule done for these weeks. Uh, well, I will have the honor of serving today. Uh, and I assume Ms. Annabelle will be my acolyte. Thank you. Uh, her list today includes the family of Doc Nelson. Uh, my folks are on here, but uh, they could really be uh, removed. Uh, but it's uh, Memorial Cares, Andy at Riverside. Uh, Maddie, good to see you today. Uh, once again, I think he probably wants to be removed, Brock. I think you're all better now, aren't you? <laughs> uh, and Ashley, who is recovering, she told me she's doing quite well this morning. Uh, Good to be young, good to be young. Uh, these along with everybody listed in your bulletins and others we know privately are ones for us to remember in prayer. Uh, mission, Pat, do you have something? Well, this month we are wanker dark sharing, but we're also in April and May doing uh, prevention of human trafficking, so it's going to be a double whammy. We'll be uh, learning about preventing human trafficking this month and next month, and then this month is our regular one great hour of sharing. And by next week, we'll have the um, boxes out. Yeah, they're, they are here. They're just, they're like in the office. Okay. Okay. We're going to get them in and out. Okay. All right. Uh, let us prepare for worship. Uh, Tim's going to play some more for us.
now. We assume a posture of worship and bow our heads for opening prayer. Loving, powerful God, joy flows over our souls on this day. Christ is risen. Fear is vanquished. Open our hearts and our spirits to receive fully the joy which has been given to us. Let us celebrate the victory of Christ and the hope for the future. Amen. Our first scripture today is from Luke. It's chapter 24, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at the early dawn, they came to the tomb. Taking the spices that they had prepared, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you that while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed like to them as an idle tale. And they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw <laughs> the linen cloths by themselves, and then he went home amazed at what had happened.
O oh, sons and daughters, sing your praise on this most holy of holy day. For Christ from the death, the life of his Hallelujah. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christians. Lift up your voices and sing. Eternal hallelujah in Jesus Christ, our King. Gracious God, you have walked patiently with us throughout our Lenten journey. We have, you have celebrated our, our successes and our growing understanding of your love, and you have mourned our faithfulness and rejection of your healing mercies. This day, as we have gathered to celebrate the joy of Easter, let us remember that we are to become Easter people, people of the resurrection, people who know what was thought to be impossible has been conquered. Forgive our stubbornness and fears. Fill us with your healing love and help us to become the disciples that you need to serve in this world. For we ask this in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now will you join me in the prayer to of confession. Most awesome and gracious God, we come humbly before an empty cross and grave. The magnitude of your sacrifice and love is far too great for us to comprehend. Many times we have too tend bewildered like those first souls who were good into the vacant end. Many times we find ourselves confused and doubting your power and love. Many times we come searching and seeking. Forgive our doubts. Forgive our disbelief. Forgive our hardened hearts and thank you for the most precious gift you can give, eternal life. Amen. Darkness is gone. Light floods into our souls. Christ is risen. His love and mercy are poured out for you. Rejoice. You have been saved through the gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid them. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scriptures, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there, with the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know what they, where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned around, and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. 
Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Thus says the reading, thanks be to God. The gates and doors are barred and all the windows fastened down. I spent the night in sleeplessness and rose at every sound. Half in hopeless sorrow and half in fear of the day. Find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away. Just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. The gate began to rattle and the voice began to call. I hurried to the window, looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches. Sound of soldiers' feet. But there was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. Jumped to there beside me as she told me where she'd been. She said, Someone's moved him in the night, and none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away, and now his body is a
come down here for the magic trick. I'm wondering. I have markers and I have a box. You are very astute. You know that? <laughs> Well, I have more than just markers and a box. Come on, Wyatt, you need to come down here, too. He's got to bring his entourage. All right. And let's see. We've got Maddie. Where's Maddie at? Maddie's back there. Well, you know what? If you want to stay there, you can. Or if you want to come up here, you can do that, too. You want to come up here. Well, that is a wise move. And you got your teddy bear. And the tractor. Well, tell you what. Why don't you guys just come right over here? You got a seat up here on the staff. How does that sound? All right. Well, I have got three quarters here, and they're all. Do you know about quarters? They're kind of unique. Now they've got. They used to just only have the eagle, but now they've got all sorts of states and all different stuff. So I've got the ship, which is Mass or Virginia, and then I've got this little Aztec thing that's New Mexico. Um, so I tell you what. How about you like ships? All right, and I have the feeling that maybe purple might be your favorite color. Is that your favorite color? No? And green is your favorite color. Well, I'll let Maddie have green. She looks like she's a green person. Let's see. <laughs> um, I'm going to just put you, how about we put your first initial on here? I'm going to put an A in purple. Okay, you hold on to that. Um, let's see. Maddie, ah, oh, you look like a New Mexico. A New Mexico. Should we do that? Mm -hmm. Let's put your initial right here. Yeah, right. Green. Okay. And you get to hold that. Okay. Now let's see. Wyatt. You started with a W, right? That's right. Let's give you blue since you're a boy. How does that sound? Nice. Okay. All right. So there you have a blue W. Let's let Grandma hold it for just okay. a second. All right. I'm going to put my markers down. And I have a box here. And this box is empty. So what we're going to do is we are going to put your quarters. was in that tomb, okay, and he went in, and he was there, right, and then he was there for what, three days, and on Sunday morning, what happened when, when they went? He disappeared. He was completely gone. Where do you think he could have gone? Well, you know what, we sang some songs today. And I left, I think, mine up there. Who's got a, a bulletin handy? What was the first song that we sang? Christ the Rose. Christ the Rose. Yes, up from the Gravy Rose. Okay, Annabelle? Nobody was in that pew behind Brooke. Why don't you go behind her and grab the red hymnal and bring it up here? See where Brooke is? Go behind her, because nobody was in that one, so nobody touched it. And grab the red hymnal and bring it up here. Um, and tell you what, Maddie, do you want to do that? Do you want to get the purple hymnal in that first row? Yeah, I'll get it. It's right there in the front. I think there's a purple one. There should be a purple one mm -hmm. right over here. Because nobody was in that. We don't want to bug that. Let's see. And Wyatt, Wyatt. Well, we won't make you go very far. Come here. You want to come here and get this red hymnal? Okay, you give her the purple one. Come here, Wyatt. Come here. I won't bite. Come here. You want to get that red hymnal right there? Right here. Right there. Go take that back to your mom. Okay. Nope, your mom. Right over here. <laughs> All right, Annabelle. You got the hymnal. What I want you to do, somebody yell out, what was the page number to Christ Rose? 564. 564. Open it up. Now, what was the second one? 113. 113. And what was He Lives? What's the number to that? 113. 113. Look what you found in there. What did you find? <laughs> what did you find? You found your quarter. And it has your name, your 
Is it got your initial on it in your color? And what's on the back of it? Is that your quarter? New Mexico. Um, well, it's on here. Yeah, the back. You've got the Virginia. And you have the green New Mexico. And what have you got? Are we still looking? Wait a minute, I think they told you the wrong number. He told you the wrong number. He lives. It's 285. Oh, there you go. You got the blue. Look. How cool is that? Oh, got a penny. <laughs> a penny. Well, it's actually a quarter. It's worth 25 pennies. Well, so your quarters didn't just appear, but they appeared where? Up from the gravy rose? Christ the Lord has risen today, and he lives. So it's just like Jesus. He was gone from the tomb. He disappeared, but he showed up, risen from the tomb. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you guys get to keep those quarters as a reminder that Jesus is no longer in the tomb. The tomb is empty. The cross is empty, and he has risen, and he is now with the Father. And guess what the best part is? He's coming back. You never, never get to spend the quarter. <laughs> Why don't you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are no longer in that cold, dark tomb, but you have risen, and you are among us, and you are with the Father and coming back for us. Thank you for these things. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, you can go back. We are going to look today... At um, the Gospels, mostly of John. But we're going to look at some of the other wonderful things around Easter that maybe you didn't know. If you've been on this journey with me, you found out on Monday, Thursday, how much more there is to the Easter story than we even know. How many more things God had put into place. Which goes right along with 1 Corinthians. We're going to come back to that. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. This is a picture of the garden tomb. I'm going to hop up here so you can see me a little better, maybe. This is a picture of the garden tomb uh, that I was able to go to in Israel. Now I know that um, tradition has it that it is in the Holy Sepulchre. Um, but... Tradition doesn't always trump truth, just when it comes to tourists, I think. But this garden tomb was, it was an experience like no other. So let me ask you this, what is a tomb? Well, it's a place where what? Hope ends, and where dreams end, and life ends, and where everything ends. The tomb is a place at the end. But in God, the tomb, he took the most radical thing and the place of the end now becomes what? The place of the beginning. Where was it that God placed Adam after he created him? It was in a garden. The Lord took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden. God's first act towards man was to bring him to a place of life, to fruitfulness and blessing. And when did God bring him into the garden? On the sixth day. It's the day of man. Messiah died on what day? The sixth day, Friday. After his crucifixion had been completed, they took his body down and they placed him in a tomb, but not just any tomb. It was what? A garden tomb. And on the sixth day, God brought man into a garden. And on the sixth day, man brought God into a garden, into a garden tomb. See, a garden is a place of life. But a garden tomb is a place of death. The Garden of Eden was a place of blessing, but the garden tomb was a place of sorrow. The Garden of Eden was a place of God's full creation. And the garden tomb was a place of man's creation. Joseph of Arimathea had that tomb carved out of stone. So God brought man into the place of God's blessing, but man brought God into the place of man's curse. Why? 
Because God allowed himself to be brought to the place of the curse to give us the power to leave that place. That he might once more bring us to the place of life and to a life of his blessing. See, it's a radical way of the kingdom of God. In God, the journey does not go from life to death, but from death to life. End is the beginning. So we find life. You must come to the tomb. It is the hopelessness that we find true hope. And in the place of sorrow that we find true joy. And in the place of death that we are born again. In God it is a tomb that we actually find our birth. Now I want to tell you a little bit about Yom Rishon. If I said to you today, Happy Yom Rishon, instead of Easter, you'd probably give me a funny look, wouldn't you? Maybe even a dirty look. Do you know what Yom Rishon is? Why do you think the resurrection took place on Sunday? Sunday is the day that everything began. In the beginning was Sunday. Sunday is the day that the universe began. The day of creation when it actually started. And Sunday is the day of the beginning. And all who receive it are given a new beginning in their lives. See, Sunday comes what? After the Sabbath, after Saturday. And the Sabbath is the last day, the day of the end. So if that's the case, then the resurrection had to happen on Sunday because it is the power of what happens what? After the end. It's what happens after the Messiah's end on the cross. And it's what happens after the end of the old life. Sunday is a commemoration of the cosmic beginning, and the resurrection is the cosmic new beginning. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Sunday is the day that begins the creation, and the resurrection is the beginning of the new creation, the first fruits. So, let me ask you, can we go a little farther? I like to go deeper. In the scriptures, the word Sunday doesn't even exist. It doesn't. That's actually in modern Hebrew, Hebrew that I learned that. It's called Yom Rishon, which means day one. So before day one, there was what? Well, there was no other day, because God is outside of time. He's outside of space. The power of day one wipes away all of the old. All things will become new, and every day will become the first day after the resurrection. The beginning, day one. Well, now we're going to get to the first fruits. So I've already talked a couple little things about Hebrew, but now we're going to learn what the first fruits were. This goes all the way back with Moses and Exodus and then Proverbs. And it talks about at the beginning of spring. There's two harvest times, spring and fall. And it is at this time right now that they're harvesting everything and they bring their first fruits before God. This is where we get into 1 Corinthians. But now in Christ, risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. So wait a minute. Paul is taking their celebration of the first fruits. That's what they're celebrating today, right now. If you were to go into a Jewish temple, they would be celebrating first fruits. But Paul says, now wait a minute, Jesus now has become the first fruit since he's risen. What does he mean by that? Well, it's the day of Rishi. So first fruits has also got another name, Rishi. The priest would wave the sheaf, so it would be like grain. He would wave the sheaf before the Lord on the day after the Sabbath. So if yesterday, Saturday was the Sabbath, today is the day after. This is the day of Rishit, and on that for this day, the first sheaf of spring harvest would be lifted up to God, and it would be dedicated to him. And since it represented all the sheaves that would be gathered, that would follow by consecration, the entire harvest was consecrated because of that one sheep. And it took place, as I said, the day after the Sabbath, not just any Sabbath, but it had to be the Sabbath of Passover. It was the day of new life, the day that sealed the ending of winter. Hallelujah. Can I get a hallelujah out of that? Hallelujah. hallelujah. And 
the beginning of springtime. See, Messiah died on Passover, and he was in the tomb over Sabbath, and the Sabbath of Passover. He arose on the day after that Sabbath of Passover, on the day of what? Reshit, as the first fruits. So it's his resurrection that ends the winter of our lives, and it begins the springs, and, and that's what gives us new life. And because he is consecrated, <clears throat> then all of the harvest of souls after him is now consecrated. Just like that priest raised that single sheep that covered everyone, Jesus was raised up as that first fruit, and now we are all consecrated. <clears throat> now there's also the mystery of the napkin. And it's only really found in the Gospel of John. I read it. I don't know if you caught it. It depends on the translation. Some say <clears throat> the covering on his face was rolled up. That's what this one did. Others say it was folded up. If you were to look at the napkin, it's right. Yeah, I can't see very well here. It's right about here. If you notice, the regular sheet was all crumpled. But the one that was on his face was neatly folded. That was not happenstance either. See, when they would go in, and what I didn't realize is when they would go in to prepare a body, you could not see a naked body. So they would go in with all the spices and they would cover the body with a cloth. And then they would just remove a part of it. Well, they put the spices and they wrapped it. And then they would remove another part and put the spices and wrap it. And then when they were all done, they would grab the corner of the sheet and as they were walking out, they would pull it with them. So the sheet came off, but they never saw the body. And then the stone was rolled in front. Now with Jesus, it was totally different because since he had to be taken down before the Sabbath, he couldn't be prepared. And I said today at, at Easter sunrise, the funny thing that I thought was interesting, the women did not go back because it's from 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock from Friday night to Saturday night. They didn't go back at 6 o'clock. It's light out. They didn't prepare the body then. They waited until Sunday morning. Why is that? I think it was a God thing because Jesus had to be in the tomb for three days. So when they go back and, they, and the stone is rolled away by the angel, it says when Peter and John, Peter goes in. John, he gets there first, but he, he waits. He backs off. Peter goes in to look, and it says, the sheet <clears throat> was crumpled. But what was on the face had been folded. There's a reason for this. Because a king, and this was customary, and everybody knew this, by culture, a king, when he would sit down to dine and eat his meal, if he was not done, and it would be anywhere from a 7 to a 14 course meal. So they took a long time to eat. And the king could get interrupted many times through that course of that meal. And so if he was not done, he would take his napkin and he would neatly fold it and he would lay it beside as a sign that said, I'm coming back. Don't take my food. But if he was done, he would take that napkin and he'd crumple it up and he'd just toss it down, which let the servants know that he was done. You could remove it. Did you notice? That Jesus did not just resurrect from the dead. But how was that napkin from the face? It was folded. And it was left there to signify something huge. The king is coming back. I'm not done. If that doesn't give you goosebumps, I don't know what will. I know that every Easter morning since the very first has been different. Has each year, each circumstance, you can think back in your lives, the ebb and flow. We come to the tomb with all mixed emotions. I was kind of lamenting the fact um, Friday night they had a, a series, they played it again on oxygen. And, and uh, they were replaying since it was the 15th anniversary of some very, very close dear friends of ours' murder. They were playing. And you know, it's interesting how things go, time. I remember the day, I remember what we were doing when we got the news, but I didn't remember that it was literally the night of Easter. That part I had forgotten. 
And I thought about all those emotions and everything that had happened. And, and I could kind of understand with the disciples the brutality of it, the helplessness. What could you do? But on the flip side, I remember another Easter morning that was very joyous. And I told my kids I had to look up because I was pretty sure it was almost the same date and it was very close. In 1994, at 5.30 in the morning on April 3rd, I got my ring right before Easter sunrise. So that was a very joyous occasion. You know, we approach the tomb today with so many mixed emotions. For some, we've lost loved ones. For some, we've had births or we've had exciting things happen in our lives. Sometimes we come feeling <laughs> kind of bewildered. 2020, the continue of 21. The garden tomb is a place where emotions just run full and the whole width of the spectrum. I can personally say that when I stood waiting for my line in turn to go into that garden too, oh, it was unlike anything I had ever experienced. There was joy and elation, oh, but there was so much humility. You felt so humble and you felt so small walking in to that empty grave. There was a little anxiety, there was a little uncertainty. Before you went in, you didn't know what you were going to feel. You didn't know what you were going to see. Everyone that came out, came out with tears. It was interesting later, or they, most people couldn't talk. And then to hear the comments from even my, my group later as they processed that, what that meant to each of them. I know there were several on our, our trip that said that was the whole reason why they came, was just to do that. And it didn't leave them disappointed. You know, I'm pretty sure that that's what those men and women felt like that day when they walked in. They were on holy ground. And they had such a mix of feelings and emotions that they couldn't even put it into words. You know, Mary, when she saw Jesus, went back with a joy that spilled over, and she so bad wanted to tell everyone, but did they believe her? <laughs> no. They said they just couldn't believe it. They shook their head. And disbelief. Well, I want you to know, I love this picture. I want you to know that no matter what the emotion is that you come to with this Easter morning, that you're not alone. It is at the tomb, though, that we can bring, what, our fears, our uncertainties, our frustrations, anger, hopelessness, and even our darkest thoughts and times. And we can bring them and place them and lead them where the stone is rolled away. And I'll leave you with the words that Jesus left with Mary and Martha. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Anyone who believes in me will never die, but will have eternal life. Amen. And I'm not even going to say it. I'm going to let you just read it and I'm going to let you internalize it for what it means to you. If you bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hope, with a renewed sense of maybe purpose, with a new re sense of love, maybe yearning for that new beginning that we desperately long for. And we thank you that you have given us an empty tomb as a sign that that is where our hope lies. That you are a God of life. You are a God of eternal life. And you are a God of salvation. We pray for all of those today who are mourning and weeping. Those who have no hope. And we pray that your light will come in and you will bring men and women to touch those lives, to give them the hope, to show them where their hope lies, and to show them that there is a path to a new beginning, to the first fruits. 
We thank you for your son who came knowing full well what the outcome was going to be and yet was still willing to endure the pain and the hardship, the grief and the sin so that way he could set us free. We can never repay back that gift. And we thank you for the gift of the prayer that he taught each and every one of us to pray. Would you join with me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we come to our time of offering today, we're still not passing the plate. But they're in the back, and it's a way for us to give back that of our first fruits that which God has so abundantly given us. So that way he can use it, not to just bless this congregation, but to bless those beyond these walls and to share the love and the redemptive story of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. because he lives. We're going to do the first and the third.
may be seated. As we come to the Lord's table, we're going to do one of two things today. We had individual cups that we've been using that you're still more than welcome if you have not gotten one and that's what you choose and just raise your hand and the ushers will bring you one and you can stay in your pews. Otherwise, for those who would like to come up and take communion, I'll have you come up by way of center aisle and I will hand you the elements. I'll hand you the, the bread and then I will hand you a cup of juice. So that way you can do either. If you want to come up front, you can do that. If you don't and you want to stay in your pews, that's fine. And if you didn't get communion elements, just raise your hand. Um, as we come before Christ's table, let us remember the night in which he was betrayed, which was just on Thursday night. He sat with his friends and he picked up that middle piece of bread. He wrapped it in the cloth like that was customary and he broke it. But instead of hiding it, he said, this is now my body which is broken for you. Every time you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. That center piece of bread was the bread representing the Messiah. And after the supper, he took the cup and he poured it. And it was a specific cup at a specific time. And it was called the cup of salvation, the covenant that had been given by God. He said, this is now going to represent a new covenant. It's going to be my blood, which will be poured out for the forgiveness of all sin. Every time you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. And so as the body of Christ, we come before Christ's table that is open to all. Eating and drinking, remembering that Christ is not only this Messiah, but salvation comes only through him. We remember his death, his resurrection, and we proclaim his coming again. You bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask, we thank you that we can come today to partake at your table. We thank you for these elements. We ask that you would bless them, you would consecrate them to yourself. And that as we partake, that we would feel your presence. And we would feel the cleanness that comes only through the saving blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, for those who would like to come forward, I will ask you to just go ahead and make a, a single file. Um, just leave plenty of room from the one in front. The table is open.
pews, the body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come as your body in joyous celebration on this day, this day of new beginnings, this day of hope, this day of resurrection. We ask that you would bless these elements to our body and make they, may they fill us with your life anew, now and forevermore. Amen. And now may you go in that unbelievable love of God that will not let you go. May you go in the saving grace of his son, Jesus Christ, who loves you so much that he endured everything beyond measure to make a bridge for you to cross into heaven. And may you go in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that keeps us all interconnected in one, through and in him, now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.